everybody. Hello. Uh, so, spoiler alert, I'm gay. Uh, <laughs> big surprise, I know. Uh, but, and I love it. I love it. Uh, for many reasons. Uh, one of them being that I don't really have to care if dudes find me hot. Uh, in fact, I don't know if straight guys are aware, but lesbians have literally spent decades coming up with fashions and a standard of beauty that are specifically for not you. Like, that's something we've done. Uh, and it's fantastic. It's great. It's free of all this pressure that straight women are bombarded with in the media and advertising. Like, essentially, as a lesbian, I can wear whatever the hell I want. Sky's the limit. Like, I have a sailor suit I wear on the regular, just when it's cold enough outside. No special occasion. Like, I can wear cargo shorts to a wedding. Who's gonna say shit to me? Who's gonna... What are you wearing? I'm a lesbian! How dare you? Crocs in a ball gown? Is it Wednesday? I think it is. This <laughs> I don't worry the last one. It's just Professor Lesbian most days. Uh, so like a lot of comics, uh, I had a weird childhood. I had a very unique upbringing. Uh, and that's because growing up, uh, I was actually raised by a crazy person. I was. My nanny was a paranoid schizophrenic. Because uh, my family was too poor. Couldn't afford real childcare. And like, yeah, Cecilia was living with us, not doing anything because she's crazy. And what could go wrong with that scenario? Sure, watch our child. Uh, but, and people get freaked out when they hear about Miss Cincinnati, but it was fine. She was a very loving woman on her meds most of the time. Uh, and it actually had its own perks. It did. Like, Bea Cecilia just told the best bedtime stories <laughs> ever. Because a schizophrenic sense of imagination is just unmatched by anyone else. So, like, everyone else's bedtime stories would always start out. You know, like once upon a time, in a land far, far away. Uh, but Thea's stories were always like, right now! <laughs> in this country, the government is run by aliens who look just like me. <laughs> Listen! Listen! Okay, good night. <laughs> Thea was a very religious woman. It's common with schizophrenics because religion looks crazy, and vice versa. And, uh, we went to church every Sunday when I was a kid, uh, and, and the sermons were always really intense, very fire and brimstone. I remember one week, uh, the pastor said, uh, he said, the Antichrist will fool us all. They will be good and kind. No one will know who the Antichrist is. The Antichrist won't even know they're the Antichrist. <laughs> and immediately I thought, oh shit, I'm the Antichrist. <laughs> Which is a lot of pressure on a seven-year-old. Uh, it's a lot. And at the same time, I knew deep down inside that I was gay, uh, which you might think is a bit much to have on one's shoulders. Uh, but really, all it did was kind of put the gay thing on the back burner for a little while. Because when you think you're the ultimate evil who will bring about the end of days, gay, not that big of a deal, all of a sudden. Just no bigs. Um, but I was all alone as the big gay antichrist. I felt so alone, because that was just me. It was the only one. Uh, and I'm fine now. You know, I've been out for a while. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm not the antichrist. I'm 99% sure I'm not. But even if I did end up being the antichrist, I think I'm gonna agree that would be a huge relief for all of us, really. Because like, if the skies melt and four fiery chariots descend from the heavens, and then the other side is just this, just like, eh. Girl. <laughs> I think you guys would be like, oh, we're cool, guys. Armageddon's not that bad. It's, it's chubby lesbians because she's watch cat videos on YouTube. 
That's what I would do. I would do. Lol cats for eternity, boiling river of hummus, just Dante's Inferno, but hella gay. I, I have a 14 year old little brother who I love very much. Uh, different man, don't worry. Uh, he recently discovered my comedy videos on YouTube, uh, and the way I figured that out is that he's taken it upon himself to defend me in the comments section against trolls. It's really sweet. He's a sweet, sweet kid. He is. But he's also, you know, a 14-year-old boy. Uh, so like a lot of teenage boys, hates school, spends all his time playing video games. He prefers very violent, graphic video games, and my parents are concerned about the effect those games will have on him at such a young age. You're thinking about banning him from playing the game, uh, which I think is the wrong approach. I don't think you tackle that concern by banning the game. I think you handle that by making the game more realistic. Yeah. yeah. So like if you steal a car and you get three to five, you make the game hold you that sentence for the next three years. Every time you turn on the game, it's just your character in line with a lunch tray, just going around <laughs> lifting weights, drinking radiator wine, just paint an accurate picture. Yeah. And if you die in the game, that's it. None of this unlimited lives crap, you're done. I don't care how soon it was, I don't care if you're like, oh my god, I spent $80 on this game! I only got to play for 10 minutes! It's like, yeah, if you join the mob and you're around punching cops in the face, you're gonna get shot. That's how life works. And if you kill someone in the game, the body shouldn't just like conveniently disappear. I think the game should ramp up and be like, oh my You should have to call friends just sobbing like a messed up fan, man. That's gonna do it for me. Thank you guys so much.